Hi again. Welcome to our next lesson. Uh, this week our topic is, Does God Forgive Everybody? So, does God forgive everybody? That's a hard one. So, here's some questions for us to think about. We're not going to be trying to answer these. We just want to think about them. So, we know, again, sin is real and it affects everyone. But, how do we deal with it? How do you deal with the fact that you sin and that other people sin? Do you uh, feel really guilty all the time? Do you, do you lord it over other people and say, oh, you guys are making mistakes. You guys are doing wrong stuff. Or do we just ignore it? Sort of like what we talked about last week. And then the more important question, how does God deal with sin? So how does God deal with sin? So let's watch our video and we'll learn a little bit more through that. Oh, not yet. I forgot I had another slide. So the question then is, if God forgives everyone, what does that mean? So we talk about God being loving and God forgiving us. So what does that mean? Uh, this is from our confession and forgiveness that we do every Sunday. So we start every worship service with talking about that God forgives us. So this is the one we hear. We hear, God hears the cries of all who call out in need, and through his death and resurrection, Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Led by the Holy Spirit, live in freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. Amen. It's God's, your sins are forgiven through Jesus. Not through doing good things and making up for it. God just forgives you. And then, led by the Holy Spirit, we're called to live in freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. So we're forgiven first, and then we go do stuff. It's not, you got to do certain things before you can get forgiven. It's, God forgives you first, no matter what you've done or who you are. And then you're changed through that and you go out and do stuff. So let's watch our video now. Really? Why me? Hi. So yeah, I don't really know what Kimmy's talking about. I just got back yesterday from the cave we were living in to try to separate ourselves from sins of the world. It did not work out great for me, but Kimmy said that she's going to stay. But now... <sighs> you know what? I'll just have to try to look up what she's talking about because now she's just talking in GIFs. Let's see. She might be talking about universalism. It's a Christian school of thought that says God intends to redeem every part of the entire universe. That God forgives everyone for what they have done and will keep forgiving everyone. Okay. So, I guess I'm alone in this. Wait. So, universalism says that God forgives us and will keep forgiving us, but what do we have to do for that? Nothing, apparently. It says that gratitude and praise for God is optional but not required. So, no matter what we do, God forgives us? Wow! This is huge! Why didn't I know this? Oh, it's because there's a lot of different thoughts on the subject. Great! Let's see. Different kinds of atonement. What is... Ah! Here, atonement is how we are reconciled with God. So these are different theories of how God solves the problem of our sinfulness. There's substitutionary atonement, which believe that humanity's punishment for being sinful is death. But Jesus pays the penalty of dying on the cross for us. And so then we're forgiven. What, Kimmy? I'm in the middle of something. All right. And then there's a theory called the model for a new humanity, which seems to be all about how Jesus told us to forgive our enemies and how he demonstrated this through his own life, even up to the point of his death. Extreme. And when we follow Jesus's example of forgiveness, our lives are transformed. Oh, 
Um, okay. So there's a whole lot of talk about God forgiving and humanity getting better for sinning. But what about all the sins that we've done and keep doing? Like all of it. Isn't anything going to happen because of that? Oh, wow. So in his book, The City of God, Augustine of Hippo talks about the eternal punishment of sinners. And he goes into a lot of detail. Lots of hellfire and suffering, eternally. And this eventually caught on in a big way, because the Roman Emperor Justinian himself pushed for it to be taught. Hmm. But it seems as though he probably wanted it to be the favorite theology of the Empire, because it would be an easy way to control everyone in the Empire. Yeah, fire and brimstone definitely catch my attention. So, this is a lot to process, but I still can't help to think that this is just a vicious cycle. Human sin, and then God has to sort it out. But then we keep sinning, like the stuff we do in church. We get baptized, right? Makes sense, and then we're washed clean of our sins. But then after being baptized, we still sin. It doesn't stop us from sinning. Plus, it's only a one-time forgiveness of sin or communion. We definitely receive it more often than baptism, but it doesn't stop us from sinning either. It's like we're in this cycle with God. Sin, then forgive. Sin, then forgive. Sin, then forgive. I'm, I'm just trying to understand, but I guess at least I do know this. God forgives me. I don't really know how God redeems me, but God redeems me. Even when I mess up, even if I do it again and again and again. There's still a lot more to understand, but at least I'm feeling better about my own sins. Speaking of things I don't understand, Kimmy apparently decided to leave her cave of solitude and start a blog about the benefits of a solitary cave life. Seriously? Hashtag cave life is trending. Wow. Just another thing about the world I may never understand. Uh, the Bible reading accompanying our video today is from Luke 23. This is from the very end of Luke. So Jesus is already hanging on the cross at this point. And there's two criminals that have been crucified on, the cro on their own crosses on either side of him. So one of the criminals hanging next to Jesus insulted him. Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and us. Responding, the other criminal spoke harshly to him. Don't you fear God, seeing that you've also been sentenced to die? We are rightly condemned, for we are receiving the appropriate sentence for what we did. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus replied, I assure you that today you will be with me in paradise. That's the end of our lesson. So, Jesus was crucified between these two men. They're criminals. Uh, they are not good people. It's not just, they are people who are being killed because they've done terrible things. It's not just two random people who are, nah, they're okay. Uh, he's being crucified between these two men who are presumably guilty of serious crimes. They didn't just crucify people for hitting someone or taking a loaf of bread they probably did things like kill people or try to uh, rise up against the whole government and that sort of stuff so it, they did bad things but Jesus welcomes one of them into paradise anyway so what does that tell you about God's forgiveness is our discussion question and I think it tells us that no matter where we are or what we've done or how far into sin we think we've fallen, God is always wanting us to come back. God is always wanting to 
love us and care for us and wanting us to um, be who God wants us to be, to be better people, to be good people who care for other people. So I think that is that. So I'll let you guys answer that or another discussion question. And uh, I hope you guys have a great week. So bye, everyone.